Uh, folks, welcome to your very first workshop number one. For, for all, a lot of us in this room, this should be your first workshop of a series of four that we recommend you to come to. Uh, of course, you can come to as many as you like. We do hold these workshops uh, every Wednesday night. Uh, I've had patients that come in here, uh, they come in almost every Wednesday, and they've been to over 40 workshops. Uh, so, you're, of course, being patients here, you're more than welcome to come to as many. And also, because of you, any of your colleagues, friends, family are also welcome to come to uh, as many workshops. If you think it's beneficial for them to hear, not only by chiropractic tonight, but we're talking about other aspects of health, simple things that you can implement into your daily lives that can help a long way. Okay? So today what we're going to be talking about here is... Uh, chiropractic wise, looking at why people under chiropractic care are the healthiest people uh, on the, in the world, okay, on the planet here. And, we, and by the end of today, we're going to be talking about how, uh, if you want, you can get your friends, families, and even colleagues checked for these subluxations that we talked about. All right, so what we're going to be talking about today, how you guys become the healthiest people, is really the fundamentals of chiropractic. And when I talk about the fundamentals of chiropractic, what I'm actually speaking about is something known as innate intelligence. Or as you hear Dr. Bunty and I talk about it today, you're just going to talk about it in terms of intelligence. Uh, this is the intelligence that controls life. From the time that you're conceived until the time that you die, it's busy responsible making every decision that occurs within your body. So Dr. Bunty will elaborate on that a little bit. And we're talking about this intelligence in a minute. Come on in. In a minute we'll talk about this word intelligence is. We'll talk about what it is. But it is responsible for your stages of uh, adaptation as you grow up. From when you're an infant all the way as an adult you are now and as you grow older it's this same intelligence that's actually in you from the second you're conceived so like, as Dr. Brian said towards the end of, end of your life and it is responsible for our development, it's responsible for our health challenges or our health goals as we go through our lifetime. Now, the thing that organizes this intelligence guys do you guys all remember what controls and coordinates every single thing in your body? You guys hopefully should know this from the very first report that you had here. What works to control and coordinate everything in your body? The brain and the nervous system. Excellent. So what we're going to take a look at here is just a, a picture of the nervous system. And as we so eloquently was put, the brain, the nerves, the spinal cord, this is what makes up the nervous system. It's something that you'll hear us talk about all the time. The master, the master system of the entire body. Whenever something happens in your body, be it your breathing, respiration, heart rate, that message goes from your brain, travels down through your spinal cord, through every single spinal nerve, to that particular organ. That information also has to go back. It has to return to your brain so it knows exactly what to do. Okay? So your brain then makes decisions based on the information it gets. And guess what? If you have pressure on those nerves, if there's bad information going in, you're going to get bad information out. So take a look at here. We're looking at the heart, we're looking at the lungs, and we're looking at the stomach as well. When you have a healthy nervous system or healthy information going from the brain to the heart, we don't have high blood pressure. Okay? We don't have blood pressure problems. Same thing with your breathing, with your lungs. We don't have respiratory distress, asthma, bronchitis, things that can afflict us in that sense. But when we do have bad information, just in this example, things in your stomach, we can have digestive issues, gastric problems, okay? heartburn. Those are things that happens when the brain doesn't receive the proper information and doesn't make the proper decisions on how to, for, for instance, digest food properly. Okay. So what is that? What happens? Does anyone remember that term that we use when the, when the messages are not being received properly? What causes that? Let's see if anybody remembers. Casey? All right. It starts with an S. Anyone? Say it louder. Go ahead. Subluxation. subluxation. He's got it right. It's subluxation that we're talking about, all right? And one thing about the nervous system that we want to know about is your brain and your nervous system, right? This is a pretty cool, cool fact. It's the very first thing to develop within our body. It's the first organ that's developed within our body. Can I give you an idea when it actually gets developed? Seven hours after con uh, conception. Seven hours, okay? Now, how many people think, you know, all the, before maybe even coming into chiropractic care, before even knowing the importance of your nervous system, most people feel like the heart is probably the most important organ in the body. The heart, the lungs, the eyes, all those other important areas, they develop roughly around the 24th day plus in our body. Now, why? You've got you to ask, ask the question, why, why is the nervous system 
Why is your brain and your spinal cord developed first in the body? Why? Because all those other organs, all the other systems in our body is dependent on the nervous system's function. Okay? It's dependent. It's waiting for the messages to come to it so then it can tell it what to do. The, the heart is waiting for an actual nerve impulse to be sent so it can tell the heart when to pump, to pump faster, to pump slower, to raise your blood pressure if you're running, to lower your blood pressure if you're sleeping. So these are things, it's dependent on it because without the nervous system there, what is a heart? What are your lungs? It's just there. The lungs aren't really allowing the oxygen to transmit through your body without the supply of the nervous system. And you can, you can adapt that example to any organ, any system in your body. Okay? I think what Bo Dr. Bunty is trying to help all of you understand is just how important your brain and your nervous system are. Okay? To give you guys an even bigger example of this, your brain is the only organ within your entire body that's fully encased by bone. Right? Got that skull on the outside to protect it. Because we know whenever we have damage to our brain, those are the times where we have life-threatening changes or paralysis. Okay? Those are the times when our body is most affected. So again, that's the importance of your brain and your nervous system together. And again, we use that term subluxation to see what actually stops that transmission of the nerves. What interferes with it. First of all, I want you all to understand it never really fully stops it because if it was, it will end up in a paralysis type uh, situation. That's not what we're dealing with here. That's not what we're dealing with with any of you. Okay, but we're talking about subluxation. And one of the key areas, especially now for this group right now, one of the key areas that we focus on because we know, again, if this area improves, it enhances your health. It starts with this area and that's in the neck. And this is an example of a subluxation of the neck. And if you take a look at, at the slide here, that blue line is representing that, that normal, that normal curvature. Again, there is a normal, mind you. Okay? So that blue line is representing that normal, and that red line, that red line is actually representing where this person is subluxated. Now we're not looking at, if you look at it, if you actually count with me, there's seven individual bones in the neck. We're not talking about one bone being misplaced. We're not talking about one bone in comparison to the other. We're looking at the entire neck area. So this is known as a global subluxation. And that can happen anywhere in the mid-back, that can happen in your lower back. So now what we're looking at is, if a subluxation is there, actually I'm going to go back real quick. If a subluxation is there, there are three main factors of a subluxation that can cause it, I should say. One of them just showed up, so I'm not going to ask you to um, answer that. One of them I'll help you out is chemical reasons for causing a subluxation. Can anybody remember what the other two are? What do you think can actually cause the spine of yours to, to misalign like this? to bend like this. Accident. Say it louder. Accident. An accident. Be a bit more specific. Car accident. Car accident. Anybody else? So he's talking about a physical misalignment. I heard another good answer over here. Somewhere over here. Stress. stress. Okay? A vague, a vague term, but it is stress. So now we're looking at emotional aspects of, of uh, subluxations, and that's exactly it. It is broken down to those three main uh, categories and, and within each category there's many reasons so let's 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 talk about that we have the damaging toxins so now this is this is what I mean this may not be you this may be you this is the pen and all that we take every day these are the painkillers just to get through the day I had someone come in just the other day it takes 20 painkillers a week just to sleep okay so these are the damaging effects it has chemically this is also involving the poor air we breathe in this is the additives in our food that do cause a, a breakdown in our body on a cellular level. So now we're also looking at the destructive thoughts. This is the stress. Whether it be emotional stress of uh, work stress, it could be family stress, it could be financial strain, okay, whatever it may be. And, and, and I want you to think right now of someone that you know has dealt with depression. And I, hopefully no, no one has, but the, the truth is we know people that have. Okay, think about it. These people are always battling some sort of illness. They're the first ones to get sick. They're the first ones to complain of some sort of problem. You, you think about the effect it has. Have you ever looked at their posture is the next question. You've seen somebody that's worn down, right? Just look at the effect. 
Well, I'm asking you to think very differently right now. I'm asking you to put a relationship to your spine, to the way you're actually feeling. And of course, the degenerating traumas. Now, and let me be honest with you guys, a lot of people actually do throw that example out there, uh, a car accident, so on and so forth. And on, all of you really want to know when we look at your x-rays, what caused that? Was it that car accident? Some of us claim to never been involved in one. Was it a slip and a fall downstairs? Some of us claim to never have been in these situations. Can I, I'll be honest with you, it's never just one thing, okay? Sometimes even if you do have that car accident, it's usually not even that. What it really leads to as far as a trauma, a physical trauma is concerned, Dr. Brian's gonna cover with you right now. Yeah. Guys, the major thing that does lead to a lot of the presentations of subluxation that make it into our office are the common minor repetitive traumas that we, we tend to overlook. Okay, so whether or not we get injured, um, sometimes by lifting improperly. I know I was guilty of this a couple weeks ago. And this is something that completely prevented me from being able to work. Mm -hmm. So lifting injuries can create subluxation within your spine. Whether it is lifting weights, whether it is doing housework, if you're lifting improperly, your spine is always susceptible. Okay? Uh, exercise as well. So biking or a lot of the people that we see just driving around Singapore. Okay? Not only do they have the stress of being on the road, stuck in traffic, they also have the stress of poor posture. So that poor posture over time, really, really creating that forward head posture that affects them. All right? There's two that I'm just going to go briefly over. One more, relaxing, reading improperly, or laying down improperly. And two of the biggest ones that not just the elder population or the adults are guilty of, but the kids these days as well. And this is what we're seeing more and more, especially in Singapore, a lot of reverse curves of forward head postures due to these two things, okay? Computer work. In this office alone, we have a lot of professionals that work eight, nine, 10 hours in front of a computer. And the whole time they're like this. So what do you expect that their spine is actually gonna look like. More importantly, when they talk about lock, la, uh, lack of energy and neck pain and shoulder pain, where do you think that posture or where that, those symptoms are coming from? It's all because of the subluxation from those minor repetitive traumas from sitting all day. And then also this, from using the telephone, or for a lot of people these days, it's using their phones to text message. So head down, chin down, again, in that same forward head posture. Guys, the reason why we bring this up, we just want to make all of you aware of the small changes each of you needs to make within your lives in order to prevent subluxation from perpetually creating this cycle of pain, okay? And also for preventing your spines from becoming worse than they could all continue to get, okay? Before it all begins, this is something else that a lot of people don't know, the birth trauma. 80% of all childbirths have some kind of spinal trauma whether to the mother, whether to the baby, or to both. So a lot of times when people make it in for their first examination, they're already 20 years too late or 30 years too late. Okay? And this is why we love to see children, we love to see families, because we can see them develop healthy from the time they're small all the way until they're grown up. Let me just take a look. I just want to point out a couple of things here. This is a normal childbirth, a picture of a normal childbirth here. Can, can anyone see where their shoulders are pointed? Are they facing towards you or away from you? They're towards you, right? We can see that? Can you see which way the head is pointed? <coughs> it's almost all the way. I challenge anybody, don't do it. I challenge anybody here to do that right now. You know, our, our, our bodies are only meant to go a certain amount. So this is taking it beyond its normal range and just in order to get it out of the body. Now again, this is, I'm not saying this is right or wrong. Okay, but I want you to look at the things that we take for granted on a normal basis, and this is what we consider a normal childbirth. And when kids are bo born with colic, when they're born with jaundice, which we just saw one, two, three weeks ago, completely yellow from top to bottom, couldn't digest, wasn't able to have its first bowel movement until three weeks after being born. Okay, simple adjustment of the spine, we open up that nervous system as far as it goes to the digestive system, Okay, so we're looking at the mid-back range. And number one, baby's doing just fine right now. Okay? So guys, what we're trying to tell you, ironically itself, is that life creates stress. And that stress, whether physical, whether chemical, or whether emotional, is what's the main cause of your subluxations. Okay, yeah. just keep thinking about that. Now, here's something that we come along. So let's talk about some ways that we can, uh, one of the main ways that we can help prevent, uh, Prevent your spine from getting worse. And this is for anybody that's in chiropractic care or not in chiropractic care. So you can f uh, feel free to share this with your friends, family, and your colleagues. This is something we're asked almost on a daily basis. Or even remember when you first came in here? 
is it the way I sleep? Um, you know, is that? The, let me ask you guys something. Let me tell you something. It's it's the way you sleep is not causing this problem that you may be having, but it's not helping the situation. And that's it. So let's talk about the proper way uh, to sleep, right? And now the big key thing is, and, and I want you to know before we even get into the details of it, is you want your spine to be neutral. The neutral positioning of the spine, regardless of how your spine is right now. Okay? Regardless of how your spine may be positioned, I want you to be in neutral when you sleep. Right? So that's flat. There should be curves in the spine, yes, but that's laying nice and flat this way, from the side this way, not from the side this way. Okay? Not from the side, let me put my one leg over the other and this way. Because you can't stand like that. Okay? So that's how we should do. Now, why is that important? Because majority of our time, think about, do you do anything as consistent as sleep? Some of us sleep six to eight hours a night. Is there anything that you do within a day that you do consistently for six to eight hours? No. So we want to make sure our sleeping, this is something that's big that we could actually make a big impact on. So how should it be? Nice and level. So from the side, you want to make your shoulders as level as possible. You want to make sure the head and your shoulders are in line with the hips along with the feet. Now one thing that's not in this, in this picture is a bolster. Okay? I, I highly recommend a small little bolster or a small pillow, whatever you want if you don't have a bolster at home, uh, in between the knees. This allows for equal um, um, joint spacing within the hips. Okay? Avoid having one leg come over the other. Avoid sleeping on your stomach. Unless you have a hole in your pillow, you can't sleep on your stomach because you're turning your side from one side to the other. Okay? That's when you wake up in the morning like, oh, I can't move my, my neck or whatever. Okay? From uh, laying face up, contour pillows. You've heard these. Everybody advertises for these contour pillows. In the, Giant has one now. Okay? Don't get the one in Giant. Okay? I'll tell you right now, here's a general way to look at the pillows because everybody asks us which pillow is best. Uh, they should be roughly around $100. If you're buying something below that, those aren't the good pillows. Just, that's just my personal experience on that. They should be roughly around that mark. If you get it on sale for 80 bucks, good job. But it should be roughly there. Because what is it doing? It's allowing for that curvature within your spine. And remember, one pillow doesn't fit all, so you have to find the contour pillows with the memory foam that allows you to take parts out and in because the same pillow for a child is not going to be the same pillow for an adult. The same pillow for a person that's 90 kgs is not going to be the same pillow for a 50 kg person. So you, you know, you're going to find the ones that are adaptable uh, in that aspect, okay? And here's the other thing, getting adjusted, all right? We have people here that have been under care three to four years already, and it's because they understand that getting their spines adjusted, getting their subluxations corrected or fixed or minimized is not about taking care of neck pain or headaches or low back pain. It's about getting your brain to function with every single part of your nervous system without interference. Okay, remember, the goal of each of your adjustments, the goal that we have here for every single person, is just to remove that interference, allowing your brain and body to communicate with 100% efficiency. Okay? So that's the biggest thing. Those weekly wellness adjustments, when you guys get through your first year, they're meant to maintain and sustain the positive changes you made. And again, your body and your health are going to continue to improve with those regular chiropractic adjustments. Okay? I want to just quickly add to what Dr. Brian just said. Right now, a lot of us right now are in that, in that boat of three times a week or even twice a week, some of us are down to. All that is a buildup. All this is a buildup so we can then maintain this, this correction as Dr. Brian uh, just alluded to. So all we're doing is stabilizing to this point. So think about it, right? We're, we're, we're trying to undo all the years of damage to this point. Then what happens? Then our focus switches from correction to maintaining. So the whole buildup is to get that to that correction, and then we switch it. Because, of course, at a certain point, we get, we get that correction. At a certain point, your body is, all right, this is the way I'm going to be corrected. And that may be different for everyone. Okay? Go ahead, Brian. Basically, guys, your body was designed to be what? It was designed to work well and to be healthy. And we know that with your adjustments, this is the number one thing, the natural thing that's going to get you guys to that optimal health level. Okay? Okay. Uh, we, we like to always sh uh, close our workshops with a story, and this is a story of uh, Clara. Okay, and she is, this is a real patient, a uh, person that's been under chiropractic care and actually is still under chiropractic care. 
And let me just give you a quick synopsis on Clara, and you're looking at the screen right now. That's exactly what she was dealing with. Okay, now if I didn't have a picture up there of her, you would probably guess she's a lot older than that. Okay, this is of a six-year-old kid. Daily headaches. First of all, kids shouldn't be experiencing any type of pain. Kids' pain receptors aren't fully developed until 18 years old. So prior to 18 years old and they're feeling some pain, there's something seriously wrong. That's what I need you to keep in mind for this uh, particular example. So daily headaches, uh, constipation. All right, let's talk about constipation for a minute. What, that, what does that mean? It means a food that she's eating. What's the purpose of food? To absorb nutrients in our body so our body gets energy. That means the food that she's eating, the body's absorbing the nutrients, but it's not getting rid of the waste. Okay, that's what constipation is, and that's, that's true for anyone. So if it's not getting rid of the waste, what happens to the waste? It builds up in our body, and now our body's toxic. Okay? And then she's having learning difficulties. Go figure. Okay? Let me show you an example. This is something uh, Clara's uh, teacher sent home. Okay? Uh, this is prior to chiropractic care. This is what she was making out. She couldn't come up with full words. Uh, even her handwriting was quite bad as compared to most of her uh, peers at the same age. And what did we do? We gave her chiropractic care. And it wasn't a specific vertebrae that says, okay, this is a vertebrae that's going to help you write better. This isn't a specific vertebrae that's going to help your brain connect. No, what we did was, as we do with anybody that has subluxation, a misalignment of the spine, we help correct that spine. And she went from writing something like this, which you really couldn't make out uh, under chiropractic care, to, to this. Now, this is a remarkable change, because now actually first she's writing actual complete sentences. If you have the energy, you could read, you could read actually, that's actually a complete two sentences, which she couldn't do before. They're actually clear. And, you know, on this example, if you, I'm going to go back, it looks like there's a short circuit wire somewhere. It looks like everything is just being written, right, and not really being concentrated on. This one, now we got, we got a, a steady flow. There's no, there's no short circuit anymore. So pretty much under chiropractic care, she went from something like this to something like this. And an obvious improvement, of course. Okay? And ever since being under chiropractic care, both mom and her, they haven't looked back. They're happy with it, as you should be. All those previously mentioned symptoms are minimized or completely gone. And if they do come around, they don't last as long. Got it? Okay? So again, our, what's our purpose beyond what's written on the wall over there. Our purpose is to promote it. We do talk about chiropractic. Listen, at times we don't, we, we like to talk to you about chiropractic. We want you to know about it. It's different. Before you came here, you never heard of it. Or if you heard of it, it's something that you may have heard of just once. This is a different way to think. This is a different way to approach your health. It revolves around a different paradigm of health. So we do promote it, we protect it, and we guard it well. And that's what we like to do.